How to Escape the 9 to 5 by Trev. That's me. So I'm going to go through the steps that I took to escape the 9 to 5. Now my blog post is quite short because I just make it in a really simple bullet point form. But I'm going to try to elaborate on each point and just give you some free-flowing ideas based on my experiences. First thing you need to do is start your passion project today. The reality is there's no good time to start it. The good time was yesterday. The good time was whenever it came to mind, whenever you had the spark. It's really never a go-ahead time. You, you want to just go for it. And the best time is while you're in your 9 to 5. I was creating material and content for many, many years. And even when it wasn't financially turning into something, I felt good by the time I left my 9 to 5. I felt good about what I was trying to do and the explorations I was doing. So at that point, I felt good about it. Before you escape the 9 to 5, I would recommend that you are, next step, financially secure. A lot of people will let financial insecurity eat away at them. And it's a significant amount of anxiety if you leave the 9 to 5 and you have this huge weight over your head that you need to be making money next month or else. You don't want that. You want to be financially secure. If you're going to attack this 9 to 5 escape, you first need to have your finances in order. Otherwise, you're just going to be back in another opportunity. So you're not going to really succeed. And some people say you need six months of a cushion in order to escape the nine to five, I would suggest a year plus because the reality is six months comes by really quickly. And if you're just thinking about your money every day, then it's very difficult to actually produce the kind of passion projects that you want to accomplish. So this security is really important. If you look at anyone who's become successful, they've likely had this security so that it doesn't affect their creativity day to day. Next thing is to learn your craft. The important thing is to choose this passion project and really master it. And get really good at this one particular craft and devote countless hours to making it work because you're not going to be perfect at the beginning. So perfection is very difficult to attain, but you can at least master it so that you're in the top 5% or 10% in your field. And that's what's going to get you some security with this particular endeavor that you're attempting. So really put the time in, the focus, to master this craft. And don't get too unfocused. I always have a problem with unfocused. I, I like to do multiple things. But combined, I think it's a mastery of, a, of, a, of an overarching goal. A mastery of of trying to build some sort of a business empire. So it's all wrapped up into one. And it's all wrapped up into my personal brand. So at least I have this overarching thing. So all of the learning goes into this overall uh, brand that I'm trying to build for myself. So figure out what it is you're trying to learn and master and go for it. Next thing, is talk to successful people in your area. Now, if you're introverted like me, you might want to feel more comfortable just learning from successful people, maybe watching YouTube videos from successful people who have done what you're trying to accomplish. 
and that at least gives you an opportunity to reverse engineer what you're trying to accomplish here. So that's what I would suggest. If you can't talk to successful people in your area, study them. And that's okay, because now we have all the resources to do so. You have YouTube, you have blogs, you can digest all of this content. So you can learn from these success stories. Because why would you want to try to reinvent the wheel? Especially when you're starting from scratch. It's very difficult to go forward if you're starting from scratch. A lot of what you might be trying to do has already been done before. So figure it out from others. Next piece is to do any work you can to get experience. Maybe you need to work under a CEO or an artist or a creative or someone who's going in your direction or who's at where you want to be in a couple of years. By working for this individual, you can get the experience you need and also potentially make money, unless you're doing it pro bono, which is another approach. But if you can do this work, then the escape of the 9 to 5 will happen because you're actually studying the person and this person will make it feel like you're not in a 9 to 5 anymore. You're actually studying success from someone you want to emulate. So it's a unique approach, not, oh, I'm going to leave the nine to five and go out on my own as an entrepreneur. Very difficult to do without having this, this person that you can get experience from. So this kind of ties back into learning from successful people, is working from the people who are ahead of you. Maybe you don't want to work under the person well, you need to do any kind of work. Maybe it's a freelancing thing. Well, do any kind of work that gets you the experience you need to be the freelancer that you want to be. Don't worry about whether you have to do pro bono or not. If that's what you have to do to get the portfolio built, go for it. It's what I had to do. I was competing with people from India on price, and I had to charge maybe $10 an hour, which is really low. I mean, any part-time minimum wage job could pay me more, but I needed that experience, so it was a good trade-off for me. Next piece is to develop a help others mindset. I think we're always about this taking approach, right? We want to take as much as we can instead of giving, but I really do think that helping others by giving your time, contributing, solving problems for others. I think that's really important if that's your mantra is to try to help other people. I think it's really important that if you can help others because the more people you help, the more success you will generate for yourself. Countless successful people have said, you know, I became successful because I targeted helping millions of people and as a result that generated millions of dollars for me so a help others mindset is going to put you ahead of most people who are throwing around blatant advertising they're throwing around their own voice and they're not really trying to help others and they're not trying to lend new opinions and that's not going to be helpful to anyone so we don't need more noise we need more helpful people and, you know, I always look at how I can help others, whether it's through this content, uh, as there's maybe people struggling to figure life out. Well, maybe this content can help somebody because I'm really just trying to share what I know. And that's maybe all you need to do is share what you know. And that's in a reality going to help others. So sort of figure out how you can package that help others type of mindset. Next piece is to sharpen your mental health. If you're going to be alone working on these projects or the single project, you're trying to escape the nine to five, you really need to have your mental health in order. You need to be sharp and you need to be with it. Like you really do. I mean, you need to be emotionally strong. You need to be prepared for the ups and downs. There are going to be months where you'll make no money if 
if it's a very difficult business you're trying to build or it's a different project that maybe doesn't start off making any money or maybe you're an artist and you have to starve in order to put out the work that you want to. Well, sharpening your mental health is really important because the last thing you want to do is give up and go back to the nine to five. It's a vicious cycle. And I've done this cycle before where I've given up and I've gone back to the nine to five, but I don't think it's the best approach because if you can sharpen your mental health, then you might never have to go back because you'll be determined. You will avoid the, the depressing moments. You will avoid the anxious moments. You will be able to handle those things if they do come up. And that's what you want to be able to do. The mental health is probably the one piece that I think a lot of entrepreneurs do not handle. They don't handle it. They don't know what to do. They're laying in bed and they're not really sure how to handle the demons. And that's, that's a concern because it's very difficult to progress and grow if you're busy dealing with your own thoughts. So think about how you can sharpen your mental health. There are a few ways taking care of your diet, exercising. Like for me, I have a lot of green smoothies every week. I exercise five to six times a week, maybe seven or eight. I mean, sometimes I'll do two a days and just to take care of my mind. And also because I have like some junk food addictions. So by exercising and trying to fill my body with fruits, vegetables, nuts, some light meat like fish, I'm just feeling a lot better that way and you know clearing out all the sugar in your diet or refined carbs that's going to help with your energy levels and you know that's what you want is a quality energy level especially with your brain going full throttle and then if you're trying to build this during your nine to five well obviously you want your mental health sharp so when you come home you don't feel like you have to watch netflix The last piece is to ensure you have the energy for long work hours. So this goes back to what I said. Are you taking care of yourself? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you sort of living off of very little sleep? I mean, some people will say that you want to deplete yourself, but I don't think so. I think what you want to do is get enough sleep so that you can put in a good quality amount of hours. It's quality over quantity, I would think. So that's what you want is the energy to work the long hours beyond your nine to five. Well, take care of yourself, diet, health, sleep, exercise, all these things, good positive relationships. And that's what's going to work for you. So those are some of the tips to escape the nine to five. Hopefully that helps you. And thanks for tuning in. Till next time. So Trev signing off. Toodles.